Hey, the reason why we do converting between exponential to logs is because they can actually ask you a question after you convert to exponential from a log or to a log from exponential. That's one way. But also, if you have logs, let's look at all these logs. Do you see them? If I have an x plus 3 locked here, does anyone have any grade 7 to 11 math that knows how to solve that, get that log to get out of my life? No. You don't have any. Because that's not a grade 10 to 11 scale. A grade 8 to 11 scale. 7 to 11, whatever. What about if the b is down here in the base? Do you guys know how to do that? Do you know how to solve that? No. Okay, b is in the base. This one you might be able to. We're going to show you how to use a calculator. But that one has a y equal. That one's in a nice spot, right? If I know how to type this log base 36 to 6 into my calculator, poof, I have an answer. That one's easy. You just have to learn how to use calculators, right? But the other ones, do you see the variables are locked in there? The way you get the variables out of a log being locked in is converting to exponential. That's why you can't do the unit separately. <coughs> That's why the units have to be put together, even though it's like chapter 7 and 8. I believe in your textbook. They have to be done together because you literally can't solve a log without knowing how to convert to exponential. And you can't solve an exponential without converting to a log. Okay? So that's when you see this, you need to know to do that. So I see here that I have an x locked beside my log. Does everyone see that? I should immediately think, how can I fix this problem so that I can do grade 7 to 11 math? I have to convert it to exponential. Okay? Now, how do we convert to exponential? Let's talk about it. The base of my log became the base of my exponent, correct? So what's the base of the log? It's 6. It's right here. So the base of my log is 6. Now it needs an exponent. What's its exponent going to be? 4. Because remember, what was friends can't be friends anymore, right? So what's together in logs will not be together in exponential. Yes? And then it equals what's left over. What's left over? x plus 3. Do I know mathematical knowledge now that can solve that? Yes. I do. I have an x plus 3. I need to get 3 by itself. What am I going to do? Subtract 3, right? So now I have x equals 6 to the power of 4 minus 3. Type it into your calculator. Power of four minus three. What is that? Ninety-three. So we go six to the power of little roof to the power of four minus is it three? Boom. One thousand three hundred ninety-three. Now we want to be able to check it. We can actually put it right back in, yes? To check it, we can go log base 6 of 1,293 plus 3 equals 4. So I need log base 6 of 1,296. Okay, fun fact. If you don't have a TI-83, you probably have a button that pops up as a log. If you have a TI-83, you can't do what I'm doing. Everyone try it out, though. It'll prove to you that you don't have the button. Okay, so we're going to go math. Arrow up so that you get to the bottom of the list fast, right? The arrow up to get to the bottom. So we arrow up, and it's A. And you hit enter. And it pops up, you just type the numbers in. Okay? So I would type in log base 6 of 1296. And I get 4. So I get 4 equals 4. You don't have the A button because you have a TI 83 or a pretend TI 84 that looks like a TI 84 but functions like a TI 83. You have to type it in like this. So if you, and the new ones you can type in like this too, but the old ones you have to type it in this way. So if this is what we're trying to type in, everyone's paying attention? Every calculator will work this way, but TI-83s have to do it this way. So you'd have to go log 1,296, and then you basically draw a line. 
and then you go divided by log 6. That's how you're going to have to type it in. So if you have the TI-83, you have to type it in as log 1,296 divided by log of 6. And the log button is just on the side. So you'll go log 1296 divided by log 6. Same answer. So, if you have the TID3, you have to type it this way. You always divide by log with a base, right? Whatever's on the bottom. Okay, Let's try another one. So I know I'm right. Left side equals right side. Cool, great, awesome. Okay, now this one. The B is locked below, yes? In the base. How do I solve this? What do I immediately have to do? Convert exponential. So what's the log of my base? It's B. And then I'm going to put it to what power? 2 equals 144. How do I get rid of a squared? When you square root, what do you have to remember every time? Plus, minus. Every time you physically square root with your arm, when your hand does this motion on a piece of paper, you have to put a plus or minus sign in front. So, I am going to get B equals plus or minus 12. The catch is the base, and what's beside your log, cannot be negative or zero. So, try and type this in. Log negative 12 of 144 and see if it equals 2. Log negative 12. Log negative 12 of 144. Oh, it's mad at me. It's mad at me because you can't have a negative in your base. Okay? So I know B equals negative 12 is not true. So I circle it, I put a line through it, and I say extraneous. And extraneous means it is a solution I got when I was doing algebraic processes. I got a solution that was negative 12. However, I have to kick out that solution because it doesn't. Okay? Now my other answer is 12. Let's try that one out. So log... 12, 144. So if I use the old way, if I use the old calculator way, come on, join me, or not, oh, there we go. Um, log 144 divided by log 12. I can type it in like that if I have the TI-83. And I get an answer of 2. So 2 equals 2. So this one's good, right? So, B equals 12 is a good answer. Make sense? Okay. The next one, the B is locked in the log. How do I, what do I first have to do every time? Convert to exponential. So I get B, this is the base, and now I need an exponent. What's my exponent going to be? 3 over 2 equals 123. Fun fact, did you know that you can actually take the 3 over 2 root? If you really want to. B equals, I'll show you how. So we need the 3 to half root. So we're going to go like this. Bracket 3 divided by 2. And I want to insert that in the index of the root. Is everyone following along? Bracket 3 divided by 2. I am trying to do this. I'm trying to insert the 3 over 2 in that index spot where the 2 is on a square root, right? 3 is on a cube root. Do you agree? Yeah. So I go 3 over 2 in brackets because that's where my calculator is for fraction, right? And then I'm going to go math. Now some of you guys are going to do this differently. Math, 5. So I put it in the index for me. The TI-83 calculators will look like 3 over 2 x root, and it's just putting it in for the x. Just keep that in mind. It is doing what you need to do. 
So you're going 3 over 2. I'll repeat myself. 3 divided by 2. Math, and you pick the one with an X, which is number 5, and it puts it in there for you. The new calculators, it physically has to put it in there. The old calculators, it says 3 over 2, X root, and it is putting it in for that. Trust me, okay? And then we have to do 123. That's what it was, right? One, so I get 24.7. If I want to check it, I have to keep that actual decimal, though. And now, this one, do I need to convert? I get people converting all the time. They go 36 to the power of y equals 6. You just made a really ugly-looking equation. If it's equal to y, can I not just type this into my calculator? Yeah, type it in. I put this one on here because people get it wrong all the time because they convert. You don't have to convert if it's equal to y, right? Did you get 0.5 or 1 half? Okay. What is this? Your turn. Go. Five minutes. Working quickly. So here we have it is locked beside our log, correct? If it's locked beside our log or the variables in our base, when I say locked beside our log, I mean if it's like attached to our log, right? Or the variables in the base. We have to convert to exponential. That has to be what you know to do. So it's going to be the base is 4. And, what's, and I immediately have to put an exponent or it's not a base. What's this exponent going to be? 2 equals 2x minus 1. If it's easier for you, 4, two, two, struggling, four squared, I went 4 to 2, two, two, two is 16. <laughs> Add 1 to both sides. 15 equals 2x. Divide by 2. x equals 7.5. And then you can plug it back in and check it. F. Where is the variable? F. Where is the variable? We added one. It should be 17. How is no one commenting? You're all just giving me these faces disgust, but no one's saying anything. Yeah. <laughs> 17 divided by 2 is 8.5. No one's speaking up, but everyone's faces were doing this. When they do that, I go, hmm, something's wrong. Either get this, or I get this, or I get this, or I get this. Feverishly erasing. I'm like, you can ask. Crazy thing. When I have one face doing this, I'm like, okay, you just got it wrong. When I have like 20 out of 20 or 30 out of 30, I'm like, okay, something is wrong. Okay, F, where's the variable? In the base. So if it's in the base, I have to convert. So the base of my log is M, is M, so that's the base of my exponent. What's my exponent going to be? 3 equals. 27. Then I take the cube root. When you take the cube root, you don't put plus or minus because you can actually take the cube root of a negative, right? The cube root of negative 27 is negative 3. The cube root of positive 27 is positive 3. Odd, it's like odd ones, like 3, 5, 7, 9, you can take negative roots. They just keep the sign they have. Now, guys, you want to know why that is? So, in order to have a square root, everyone paying attention, caveat, put your pencils down. In order to get a square root, if I do square root of 4, that's the square root of 2 times 2, and it's a 2 for 1 special, right? So these are two of these, they come out and they become 1, right? Okay, what about the square root of negative 4, though? The only way I can get that is if I do negative 2 times positive 2, and there's no 2 for 1 special, there's two totally different numbers. So this can't happen. Do we agree? Okay. What about a cube root, though? If I have the cube root of 27, that is a 3 for 1 special now because I have the cube root sign, right? 27 is 3 times 3 times 3. I take all three of these, bring them outside, and they become a 3, right? Well, what about the cube root of negative 27? Well, you can go... Negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3. Yes? 
take all those negative threes, bring them out, what do they become? Negative three. So that's why when you have an odd, you can actually have a negative. An odd index, but an even one you can't, because you can't just keep going with that. It'll always turn positive when you take two numbers. Or four numbers when you multiply them together, they'll always come out as positive, right? If you want to handle all these things. Okay, that's just a fun fact. Let's go back. Ooh, got a little, little antsy there. All right. So the cube root of 27 is 3. What about this one? Base is B. My exponent is 5 over 2, and it equals 24. And then I can take the 5 over 2 root. B equals what? C. 3.6. Okay, let's talk about H, I, and J. What's the problem with H? Yes, there's four pieces of information, and I can only convert if there's three pieces of information. So, what am I going to have to do first? Divide the two over, yes. So, I'm going to get log base <coughs> 6 of x plus 1 equals 2. And now can I convert it? Yeah. And the variable's locked beside the log, so I have to convert, right? So what's base? 6 to the power of 2 equals x plus 1. Go back. All right. 6 squared is 36. Don't know why I put it in brackets. X plus 1. Then I have to minus 1. And X equals 35. Okay, what about I? You need to divide by 6 so that you can get 3 pieces of information instead of 4 pieces. If I have 4, I cannot convert. So I'm going to divide the 6 over. And I get 2 equals log base x of 3. And I know I need to convert because the variable is attached to the log. If at any point the variable is in the base of the log or beside the log, I have to convert to exponential to only make mathematically do this. Okay? So I'm going to get base of my log is x to the exponent 2 equals 3. Now when your variable is in the base, you're going to be square rooted, cube rooted, 5 over 2 rooted, 3 over 2 rooted. When the variable is beside the log, you can just do grade 7 times that, right? So, I'm going to have to square root. When I do this with my arm, what do I have to remember to do? Plus or minus. x equals plus root 3. x equals negative root 3. If I go to plug negative root 3 in, it's going to be in right for the base. And can I have a negative base? No, it also can't be 0. So, this one is my answer. This one is... What about J? Do I have to convert it? Do I have to convert it? Do I have to convert to exponential? Yeah, because the variable is attached to the log. Convert. We're going to flip over. What's our problem here? The number is locked, in, or the variable is locked in the exponent, right? Do we know how to get that down? 
The only way we know how to get it down is by converting it to a log. Okay? And we can convert to a log when we have three pieces of information. A, does it have three pieces of information? Yes. So I'm going to take this exponential and convert it to a log. How do I know to convert it to a log? Because it's an exponential. Some people are like, how do I not know to convert it to exponential? Like it already is exponential. So you have to convert it to what it is not, which is a log, right? So same thing happens. Base my exponent becomes base my log. What's my base going to be? Four. What's going to go beside it? Seven, and it equals x. Life is good. This is a type into your calculator, right? Type it in, depending on what calculator you have. Log base four of seven. I got 1.4, round to the nearest tenth. Okay, guys, B, what's my problem? Four pieces of information. What am I going to have to do? Track that four. Then I'm going to have 8 to the power of x equals 36. Then what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Convert to a log. So I get log base. Scared me a little bit there, Harvey. Log base, 8. What goes beside it? 36, and it equals x. Once again, calculator typing in here. Nearest hundred. What are we going to get? Nearest hundred. Okay, C. Is that three pieces of information? Yes. So what can we just do right away? Convert to a log. So I get log base what? Log base 5. Because you take the base of your exponent from the base of your log. What goes beside it? 30 and it equals... Oh gosh, what do I do? It equals x minus 3. I need to get x by itself, so what am I going to do? Add 3. Now the log is separate, guys. This doesn't join the log. I'm going to go log base 5 of 30 into my calculator, get an answer, and then add 3. I'm not going the log. Here's 100, 5.11. See, what's my problem? Four pieces of information, so does the two join the three and make me like cry and die inside a little bit? No, the two doesn't join the three, you can't join the three, you have to stop yourself from doing that every single time. What you have to remember to do instead, divide by two. So 3 to the x plus 3 equals 4. And then I can convert now. Log base. Base my exponent becomes base my log. So what's the base going to be? 3. And then what goes beside it? 4. And what does it equal? x plus 3. And then I get x by itself. So I'm going to subtract 3. So I get x equals log base 3 of 4. Minus 3. Negative. Negative 1.74 to the nearest hundred. Okay, what do you think you're going to be doing? There's three or turns. Get going. <laughs> 